believe God likes it too. Thank you, Todd. Everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing, you've got something to be thankful for, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Praise God. Well, this morning, I want to take just a little bit. This is holiday weekend, and, and uh, thank God for you that are here this morning. And I, I want to talk to you about the working of angels. I believe in angels, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I am a physical being in a spiritual world. It's not a, it's not a physical world with spiritual beings. Spiritual beings were here before we got here. And we are more spiritual than we are physical. I, in fact, my physical uh, will only last for a short while. Well, I'm sorry, the young kids can leave. But the, the physical world that I know will only be here for a little while. It won't be here very long. And at its most, it, it is a short-lived world. But our spiritual being, our spiritual being, the being that we are, this is eternal. You have in you, you're wearing a body that is temporal, that only get to last for a little while, but inside of that body there is a you that's going to live forever. And that's the important part, to have that part right with God and ready to meet God at whatever time that we are called upon to do that. And that's our job. That's our business. That's what we are all about this morning. We are not, we are not as I said, a, a, physical, or a spiritual, uh, physical person in a spiritual world, or we are a physical person in a spiritual world. This world is more active in the spirit world than it is a physical world. And I cannot emphasize that enough because we are in a period of time that people don't tend to believe, I mean in the church, they don't even tend to believe that there is actually much of a spirit world out there. There is a power of influences of good and of evil. Both forces are alive, both forces are active, and uh, both of them are very involved in our world today. And if there's ever a time that we needed to really get a hold of God, it's right now. Do you believe that? you believe that? I believe that. I need to, I need to uh, be able to commission my, my angel of God for my family and my children and my grandchildren and, and the people of this church and, and people that I'm acquainted with because there are, there are great things that are happening. I know about the power of the angels of God. I've, I've related to you a story uh, before that is a, an outstanding story, and you might want to read it. It is by a, a story about the life of a man by the name of Mark Buntain. Mark Buntain was a missionary that spent most of his life in India working as a missionary. He built, orf, uh, built an orphanage there and, and a church and a hospital and, uh, in Calcutta and did tremendous, tremendous mission works there back in the past. Well, several years ago, there was a tragedy that struck that region, great rain started to come and, and the waters began to rise <coughs> and the waters got so high that the government forced everyone to evacuate that part of the city where his work was being done, where the work uh, of, of the hospital and of the school and everything that he was doing, the orphanage, they were forced to leave there. They were not given the option of staying and he had argued with them about wanting to stay with his work and wanting to take care of his work because the, the government would not allow it. They forced an evacuation by everybody. And so as he boarded the evacuation plane and the plane started to leave, he was very despondent, very discouraged, and, and uh, was wondering, will this flood wipe out everything that I have attempted for God? When this is all over, will I have a hospital? Will I have a school? Will I have a church? Well, I have a place to talk to people about God. And he was very, very discouraged by that. And while he was discouraged about that, he was praying that God would do something to protect what he had. <clears throat> while he was praying, a man walked up to him, and, and uh, Mark Buntain was sitting on the aisle seat of the airplane, and uh, a man walked up, and he stepped on the inside and sat between him and the outside wall. Well, as they were uh, sitting there, no, no conversation going on 
between them, the man started to talk to Mark Bontaine. And he started to talk to him about the work he was doing, the thing he was doing for God there. And he started conversing with him, and he started letting him know that everything was going to be okay. And he started giving him plans, and he started telling him, now, when this rain subsides and the floods go down, you go back into Calcutta, and this is what you're to do, and see if this will work. And he talked to him about uh, a strategy for a greater future than he'd ever had in the past. And while the two men were talking, Mark was talking to this man whom he had never met before, and the man is sitting between him and the window. There's no, no way in, no way out. He uh, Suddenly the stewardess comes up, and she asks them, would you like something to drink while you're in flight? Mark Buntaine said to her and talked to the stewardess for a moment, said, I will take this, and turned around to his friend to see what he wanted, and there was no one there. No one was sitting there. The seat was absent. There was no person. And he knew right then that everything was going to be okay because he had been visited by the angel of God and God had given him instruction for his future. Amen. Give God praise in the house. Come on, everybody. Give God praise. Now, I know that God, God does great and wonderful things in this day. And God is not just the God of yesterday. He's not just the God of tomorrow. But we tend to believe more in God yesterday and tomorrow than we do for today. We believe tomorrow we're going to go to heaven. We believe yesterday God did many wonderful things. But what about the God of today? The Bible said Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has never been a changed God. He is always the same. And he will be permanently in your life if you will permit him to be there, which means he is a right now God. Right now God. And I don't have to wait till tomorrow. I can experience great and mighty things from God today. And so there are different ideas that people have concerning the angels of God. And the Bible describes angels as great warriors that have come to battle and to fight for us and to defend us and to protect us and to guide us and to deliver us out of anything that we are in. I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning that you need to commission angels. You, you have the right to do that. I'll talk about that. But you need to commission them over your children, over your grandchildren. You need to commission them over trips that you're taking, jobs that you're on. You need to turn that over to the angels of God. And so we are protected by mighty warriors of heaven and the spirit world, and they will guideline us and they will work for us if we will trust God and permit them to do that. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 14, here's what the verse says. Angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them that are heirs of salvation. Now, let me share with you what that verse is meaning to me here this morning. It talks about us that are heirs, or we have inherited the salvation of Jesus Christ. I have come to receive that into my life. There are three important factors about angels of God. Number one, they are spirits, and therefore they are normally invisible to the uh, to the natural eye because unless a an angel of God takes on some form of theophany he is he is in the spirit world and we are in the physical world if your eyes could be open today and all of a sudden you could see what is around you inside of this building there would be a clustering of the angels of God they would be all around this place if you could just have your eyes open to see them, they are here. I'm reminded of a story that you've heard me tell several times of Shalomo Isaac, who was a general in the Israeli army in the war of May of 1967. Shalomo Isaac said, I met him in 1968, and he said, I, I heard this story. He said, when we were driven back in, in the Six-Day War, 
until we had no hope of survival. Our ammunition was gone. Our firepower was gone. Our manpower was down. There was little that we could do to fight against the opposing armies that were coming against us. And we suddenly began to, as we were in the valley, we, we uh, were being approached by the enemy army. And we knew that we had nothing to fight with. They did not know it, but we knew that we had nothing to fight with. When all of a sudden, as they came near to us, he said, all of a sudden, tanks turned, men turned and ran, horses were running, everything was leaving that valley and running from them as though they were afraid of them. He said, we didn't understand what was going on, but when we turned to look, the whole mountain behind us was covered with the angelic beings of God. They became visible, and they became visible to the opposing army, and it drove back the army out of there and gave us time to revamp and to be ready to take that war that they were expected to lose but won in six days of battle. I'm here to tell you this morning, the angel of God is real. Expect him to be there when you need him because he is never going to be very far from you. I know three times in my life that I have been visited by the angel of God and I've had that visitation by God and I knew when that angel of God came. I remember coming up out of Mississippi one night and I refer just to this. I was just south of Tupelo, Mississippi. There were people, they were warning people to get off of the highways. Tremendous storms were uh, there. Lightnings was flashing. Tornadoes were everywhere. The water was up over the highway. People's cars were being washed into the gullies. And while I was coming up that road, I kept thinking, if I can just get a little bit further, I'll be out of here. And the radio kept flashing and saying, get out of this, get, uh, find a place to take rescue. Don't be on the highways. And I just continued to move. And all of a sudden, I felt a beam. I felt the presence like if someone walks in and you can through your side vision see them sit down beside you. All of a sudden, I felt something come into that car with me. And when I turned to look, I saw an indentation sit down on the seat beside me. You say, that's hard to believe. Well, that wasn't your angel, so I could understand. But I saw where the angel of God sat in that car with me, and I went down that road, and I was able to drive at normal speed, regardless of what was happening. I knew at that point I was protected by God. Hallelujah. And that everything was going to be okay. And for the next about 100 miles, that angel of God rode with me in that vehicle and gave me protection and gave me guidance. And there's two other occasions that I'm not going to talk about this morning, but I want to tell you there's great comfort in knowing when the presence of the angel of God walks into your midst because you can feel that spirit and you can feel that power and you know that the angel of God is real and that he is there with you. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing is angels are sent to minister unto humans, not humans to minister unto angels. I'm not to serve angels. Angels are to serve me. God sent them to the earth to do for me, to take care of me, to protect me, and to overshadow my life when I needed them. And the third thing is, is that the angels are come to minister primarily to those that are saved, those that are serving God, those who are heirs of the salvation of God. We are in a great day with great things happening, and there are, if your expectation level can ever move up to the height that God wants it to be, God can begin to do exploits among you that will excel and exceed anything that you have ever imagined up to this time. I want God to bring us up to the level of the height of his glory that he can manifest his Shekinah and we can feel that visitation of God come upon our life. God protect our babies. God protect our little children. God take care of them in their schools and, and during the time of the developments of their minds and of their spirits and of their bodies. God take care of our child. 
We are in a great covenant. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, it tells us that we are in a better covenant with better promises than were the people back in the Old Testament. And this is true also with the ministering spirits of the angels of God. You have a name today, a name that is above every name. In the Old Testament, they did not have that name. But today, you have a name that when you summons that name, it can dispatch the angels of God to work for you. It can dispatch in the name of Jesus, oh God, I need help. And immediately at the call of that name, the angels respond to the mention of the name of Jesus. The Bible said, Everything in the heavens, the earth, and beneath the earth will bow to the name of Jesus. That means the demons in hell, man on earth, and the angels in heaven. They all bow in surrenderance under the name of Jesus. And when you use that name, the power of the adversary has to submit to you. The power of evil has to submit to you. And when you use that name, angels are released to exercise their power and their energies and their movement in your behalf. Oh, God, send your angels and let me feel the power of your glory. <coughs> you have the power today to loose your angels. You remember what Jesus said when he gave the key to the kingdom? He said, whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I release my angels this morning. I release them to protect my family. I release them to overshadow those whom I love. I release them to protect the development of the kingdom of God. I have the power this morning to loose the angels of God. And how do I get that power to loose the angels of God? There's a secret in the book of Psalms chapter 103 and in verse 20. He said, Bless the Lord, ye his servants, and excel in strength, and do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of the word. Now, here's where we are today. I want the angels to submit themselves under the authority of God and to come to help me and to be there when I need them. Here's what the Bible said. Angels listen, and they act upon the voice of the word of God. When they hear the word, they respond to the hearing of the word of God. And when you begin to speak God's words, angels begin to perform in your life. They begin to show up and begin to develop in your life. Amen. Angels hear your confession every day. You get up and confess about how bad the world is and how bad everything around you are is and, and how bad the world is treating you. Then don't expect much release. But if you get up with the words of the prophets, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Today is a great day. It's a day that I will magnify God. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And when you confess God's word, expect the angel of God to respond to the confession of the word of God. Hallelujah. They bring, they brought, they bring things to pass according to the words that you are speaking. And if you speak in faith, great things are going to happen. But if you don't speak in faith, don't expect things to happen. Jesus gave voice to the word, and the angels listened and ministered unto him. And the angels will do the same for you today if you will simply speak the word of God and speak the authority of the name of Jesus. All powers submit to the usage of the name that's above every name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's a name above every name. I've got to make God my place of dwelling. I cannot inhabit only here. I've got to have a habitation of God. Psalms 91 verse 1 said this, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, he's going to dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, what does he mean by that? Here's another verse Jesus said. 
Jesus said, I sent to you the laws and the prophets and you slew them. And he said, you, you murdered them and massacred them and mistreated them and did everything against them. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft I would have gathered you together as a hen would her brood and thou wouldest not. Now here's what it means. If you make the secret place of the Almighty your place of abiding, you'll dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. When the lightning begins to flash, the little chicklets will run under that mother and she'll throw those wings over them and she'll risk her own life to protect them. She'll do whatever she can. Jesus said, how often I would have gathered you together, but thou wouldest not. Jesus wants to be your protector. How often I would have gathered the angels to protect you, but you wouldn't receive them. I sent them, but you wouldn't accept them. I tried to give you help, but you would not honor it. Amen. And we're expecting God to do what we're not willing to believe for. And all things work on the basis of faith. Give God praise in the house today. I'm emotional about this. This means something to me because I've been there. I know what it is. Hallelujah. Now, he says in verse 9 of Psalms 91, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even my most high, thy habitation. Wow. We've made God our habitation. We've made him our place of dwelling. We've made him everything that we need him to be this morning. Whatever you need, God's big enough to meet that need. He said, I'll supply your every need according to your riches and glory. God commands his angels to guard you in all of your ways. Angels work for you, and they do that upon your confession. If you begin to confess your faith, God shows up on the confession of faith. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those three Hebrew boys that were about to be cast into the fiery furnace? They said, wait a minute, king, before you throw us in there, we got one word we got to say to you, and this is it. The God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of that fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. And before they faced that fiery furnace, they left these words, my God is able. My God is able. My God is able. And the God that is able will deliver me from the fiery furnace and take me out of the king's hand because my God is able. They stood on the ground of faith. They stood on the testimony of faith. And they overcame by the testimony of their faith. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and they deliver him. Hallelujah. Oh, God, send my deliverance. My answer is coming. My deliverance on the way. I'm looking for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The angel of God delivers those who fear him. We come to the music real quickly. I'm telling you, the presence of Almighty God is in this building this morning. And God is saying, whosoever will, let him come. I want to be so filled up with the glory of God. I want to be so filled up with the presence of God. God, don't let me perish. Don't let me grow weak. But let me stand in the face of adversity and say, heat that furnace up if you want to. Heat up the trial if you please. I didn't come here to play games. I came here to tell this trial that my God is able. I came here to tell and to witness unto this sickness that my God is able. I came here to tell men that there's an end to this journey that I'm headed toward and my God is able and he will keep that which I have committed unto him against that day because my God is able and God's going to deliver me out of this furnace and God's going to deliver me out of the hands of man because man are not my God. My God is God and I'll trust him and his name is Jesus Hallelujah! Come on, Mama. As we stand in this building this morning, I plead with you to come and pour out your heart to God.